Lately, I've been working a lot with storing data in processes, like an agent in Elixir, but I ran into a few issues when testing the agents uh, that were started up as part of the application startup. And so let's go ahead and just start an application and make an agent and start testing it and see what goes on. So we create an application, go in there, run the test, just to make sure that everything is, is copacetic at the very beginning. And go ahead and start a tmux session i like to work within tmux so i can split the screen and do some other things uh, so we're going to go ahead and hop into the project and start up a new window down there at the bottom so that we can run our tests and work there and we're going to go ahead and start out by writing a test for our agent right now we're going to have a simple agent that just stores a counter so we're going to call it counter go ahead and get that counter test started here we're going to do x unit test case or x unit case not test case and i'm going to go ahead and alias and create this alias for the agent test counter so that we can call it within here as just counter so we're going to go ahead and create a test for the initial value of the counter to say that if we get an initial value, it's zero. It's pretty straightforward. And we run into immediately that there, that counter is not defined. So we'll go ahead and start creating our agent counter here. Open up a new file, call it counter.ex. Make sure we spell everything correctly. <laughs> Go ahead and do a start link that just starts up an agent and sets the initial value there with the function to zero and sets the name equal to the counter module. Pretty normal and straightforward from what I've seen all over. And then we'll make a get that actually goes and grabs that data back out. So the state gets passed into that function and we just return the state. For us, it's a simple integer. Run our tests. Oh, we still have a failure because we have we don't have a counter that started. So we want the counter to start up as part of our overall application. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this into an application. We're going to start an agent test and give it zero arguments. Didn't realize it was an insert mode there. Okay, now that we have told it to go ahead and start the application, we actually need to set up the application to start our counter. So we're gonna use application. Start will be called with two arguments that we don't really care about for this exercise. So we're just gonna ignore them import the supervisor spec so it gives us a simple way to start up a supervisor create a children collection and the only thing that we're going to have in there right now is a worker which is going to be our counter over there on the right and it's going to take no arguments and our restart policy is going to be permanent which means that if this process dies if the counter process dies it will always be restarted over and over and then we're going to go ahead and say we're going to start up our supervisor with the children we're going to give the um, supervisor a strategy of one for one so that every time this counter dies it will 
we'll restart just that counter and we're going to name it um, as agent test supervisor because it's our over application supervisor run our tests hey our tests work because our application is starting up our counter that's fantastic let's uh add another test we're going to go ahead and add a test for incrementing the value and so if we increment the value If the initial is zero, the new value should be one. So right away we have a failure because we haven't implemented increment. It's expected. So now we need to update our state. So we pass in the name, which we've given it the module name. And now we get our state, our count, and we increment our count to return that state. And we run a test and it passes, fantastic, woo! We run it multiple times and it passes, but we've fallen into a false sense of security. What happened there? Our test failed, but why? Well, the thing is that the tests are not run in the same order or at the same time, and we only have one instance of the counter started up for our app. What we really want is that's great for our app, but whenever we want to test this in isolation, we don't want counters in other tests up throughout our application stepping on each other. Um, and these are intermittent failures, so sometimes they're hard to find and notice. So we're going to say that we want to be able to send options to counter start link and actually give it a name. Here I'm going to give it the name of our test module seemed like a, a nice easy thing to do and our setup always needs to return okay or it'll blow up so now all of our methods need to know exactly which counter they're working with so we need to pass in the name of the counter the identifier the name that we're using throughout all of our our tests so that we make sure that we're using the same one now we have start link is taking zero arguments and we're now trying to pass it one. So we're going to go ahead and give it some options and we're going to default the options to empty. And now the thing is here, we're passing in a name as an option, but the name isn't always there. So in order to work with that, we can use keyword, put new, which allows us to add something new to the options only if it's not already there. So we're gonna put a new key name and then we're gonna use at name, which we're gonna define up here um, as part of the class or the uh, module. And now we can just replace that whole call with, I said at name, probably should just be name <laughs> or options. So now the agent needs to use that name variable and we actually need to pass it in. But again, in our application code, we don't wanna to have to pass in the name over and over because this is really a single instance object so or um, uh, process. So we are going to give it a default of the name. So now I can run it over and over and over and everything looks good. Go ahead and close that so that we can see all the co code here. So the very big difference is that we're giving it a default that is used so that we don't have to pass name in all the time within our application, but it allows us to override it for our tests so that our tests can all use their own instance of counter. Thanks for joining in today and don't forget your tests.